copy whatever the big guys are doing, looking at their data, and we figure out what market is likely to do tomorrow, and we just replicate their trade. Right? Super simple. It's like it's it. This is so scammy that this show should be illegal. Sorry, I'm just trying to do the new gen influencer speak, but you know you get the meta, right? It's like every single trade, every single position, which the big guys are doing is available to us to watch because the exchange gives out data and it's crazy that this is 2023 and people are still not looking at it so what will we do we'll simply look and we'll figure out what they are doing and we'll try to replicate them if you can't beat them join them that's our mantra so on that prelude let's get started with kyalagram market right so we'll start off with what we said yesterday um i think everything is going as per plan except dollar which we have been kind of really struggling with or passing the trades for some time. So let's get started with uh, our yesterday's uh, analysis. We expected the market to go up as usual. Even on Thursday, we expected market to go up. Uh, even on, uh, I mean, we have always been uh, long the market since God knows when, uh, May 31st, May 30th, May. And it has been working very well for us. Now let's see what is happening now. So the first thing, of course, is that Nifty is forming a doji candle today right now again i have noticed this plenty of times a lot of people who begin trading think that this candle right let me just draw that candle here a lot of beginners believe that this is a reversal signal uh, this is not a reversal signal if you find a candle like this this is a yes this is an evening star doji only if tomorrow's close is below today's close right Otherwise, it is just a doji and a doji means a spinning top in Japanese and you can see this looks like a spinning top and doji normally can have two outcomes. It can either go down or it can go up. Doji can be a con continuation candle or it can be a reversal candle. Right now, all we know is that we have a doji, right? So the first insight is that we have a doji, number one, in Nifty. Now, if you go to Bank Nifty, Bank Nifty has finally successfully closed above previous all-time high which we have drawn as the blue line here but here's the good news right if you look at this this is a green sorry this is a red bearish candle what we see here three candles back this one which i'm putting the arrow on this was a harami cross a harami cross is a candle that signifies a reversal normally when harami cross happens and there's a confirmation to Harami cross, which today it happened because today's close is above yesterday's uh, close. Then it is likely that the uptrend will continue. So Bank Nifty chart is looking very bullish for two reasons. One, the previous all time high is broken. Two, there is a confirmation of a Harami cross. Right. Um, so I'll just write that. And confirmation of Harami cross on daily. Right. I'll just check if the comments. Uh, okay. So now if you look at option chain, there is a lot of mega, mega, mega put addition at 18,600. Not significant call addition, not significant put addition, but unwinds at 18,500, 18,550. That's significant. Yesterday, the option chain did not show any kind of direction. It was very uncertain and split. Today, the option chain is looking much more clear. There is clearly a bullish bias with massive supports at 18500 and 18600 both. Um, and PCR is 0 0.8, uh, which is a good number. Uh, slightly bullish, actually. Mo moderately neutral to bullish. So option chain is looking strong. And here's the strongest part of the day. FIDI data, now there are more calls than put. Normally, there are more puts than calls, even when the market is neutral. When there are more calls than put, it usually signifies strength. The green is more than red. Uh, 20,000 calls bought, 25,000 puts sold. Both of these are bullish. And futures also plus 750 crores bullish. This data we can ignore because it's stock data, no relevance for a short term expiry. FII future OI change is seven and a half thousand. 
but most importantly the net open interest in F of fii in futures is now positive which is also a good sign right <clears throat> so net net what does it read like uh, fii's are um fii's are long options long futures uh, long in everything oi is long so therefore it is highly likely that everything in fii data is screaming long right um, finally coming to dollar rupee dollar rupee it's a little confusing for me now because see if you look at yesterday's data um, two days back it formed a big uh, negative candle but what is really throwing a wrench into my analysis is that this is a triangle wedge rather which seemed like it has taken direction and it was going down right and suddenly out of nowhere there is a green candle appearing i expected this to go down as a at least touch here but now it has reversed so now i'm taking back whatever i said about dollar so far you have to watch this line if this line breaks we can have a mega breakout upwards kind of worried about dollar actually um i i was thinking this will go test the bottom of this channel again at uh, somewhere around 81 70 ish on futures but that did not happen this is looking scary now so i'll stay away from dollar but please aware that please be aware that this wedge is under formation in dollar uh, futures chart right so net net what does our analysis read nifty looks bullish on charts uh, bank nifty looks bullish on charts usdnr complicated i explained uh, now triangular wedge triangular uh, wedge on futures possible very uncertain right i i don't want to comment on this because it can also take resistance at the top and come back option chain mega put edition at 8600 bullish pcr is bullish fi data is bullish everything looks bullish so i'll stay long and i'll try and do bull call spreads with rr greater than one or even bull put spreads if i want to play safe so web.sensible.com so i'll just show what I was, I, I did not take any trade today. Uh, I just sat on whatever I had. And uh, do I have a PNL entry on Hall of Fame? Let me just see. Oh God, this is looks a little stuck. Yeah. So, which I explained in the last session, there is a put spread of eighteen six hundred and eighteen thousand. Uh, 550, which is a very aggressive put spread. I don't even know why I'm on this. There's an 18,300 June end put, which I have hedged with an 18,000 extreme put. And then I talked about having some small quantity call options, which is hardly doing anything. But I think the futures trade, which I took on almost the day's low of uh, uh, Friday, that is so basically kind of loaded with a long directional thing here. Right uh, now, important thing. So if you, I mean, please don't copy these trades or anything because, you know, um, if I exit out of these trades, you might not get a notification, but we are building that system soon so that whoever you're following, they have the option to trade, uh, share their live trades with you. Of course, not monetized because it's not very, it's not legal to monetize that. Then everybody suddenly will become like a telegram tipster. Uh, but let's see, let's look at the events calendar to see what's happening this week. So there is RBI event coming on Thursday. That's the expiry on 8th June, right? And this is an important data point. I think the single most important data point is the interest rate decision on Thursday uh, by RBI. So please watch out for this event. This is a very big event. So please, please uh, be careful about it. Uh, somebody is saying US markets is may crash anytime. So when it crashes, we'll see, right? I'll just see where is SGX Nifty now. Just to, just to get a sense of where things are. SGX is 18,700, I mean flat, right? No change. Where is Dow Jones? Half a percent down, S&P 500, flat. Uh, <coughs> So yeah, hardly anything happening in global markets, pretty uh, flat, right? So basically, I think um, what you have to be careful about this week is the fact that there's RBI policy coming. So please don't take 
extremely loaded, you know, uh, uh, extremely, extremely loaded uh, positions on uh, RBA policy might not be a good idea. So please be careful about the RBA policy. Uh, Musafir is asking how to buy gilt bonds in secondary market. Uh, very tough because there's not much liquidity in secondary markets. If you try to trade through your uh, broker, the best thing you can do is participate directly in GSEC uh, auctions. Your broker's mutual fund platform might have a direct GSEC option participating facility. Please check with your broker. They might have it. But please don't buy secondary markets because uh, the liquidity is very low. So you can put a low bid and wait on it, but you might not get it. But if you try to participate in the auction, you will get it at the cutoff price. Retail gets it at the cutoff price. So it's a good idea. Right. Anyway, that's our analysis for today. We'll see you again tomorrow. Um, as usual, uh, please take care and keep your capital safe. Bye.